everyone, welcome back to Plan for Productivity. For those of you who are new, my name is Andrea and I'm so glad to have you guys back here in my little corner of the internet because we are talking all about meal planning. I, more specifically, am going to show you how I make the whole meal planning process simple using Notion, of course. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through a little bit of my grocery process and how I kind of structure that, my Notion templates that I use for meal planning, meal ideas, how I save time and money with my whole process, and more or less what the gist of it is so you can do it for yourself. Now, meal prepping isn't for everyone. I totally get it. I personally hate it. I have done this at multiple periods in my life for various different reasons, and every single time I have given up on it. I've hated it because Oh my god, is it te tedious. I remember I hated spending all of my Sunday, my rest day, you know, cooking in the kitchen. My feet would hurt. I wouldn't even end up liking what I cooked. It was so hard to get new recipes. It was just a disaster. And if that's happened to you, if you clicked on this video, I can help you simplify this process a little bit because sometimes meal prepping can be a great tool for your health, for your wallet, for your sanity, and for your free time. I mean, being effective in the kitchen really helps you gain a lot of time out of the week, which is why finding your system for meal planning is so important. And none of them used to work for me until this one. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. For this system to make sense, I need to clarify one thing. I basically do my groceries every week. Yes, I have one week, the first week of the month, where I call it my restock week. And I just tend to buy things that are going to last me the entire month or maybe two weeks. And I just, you know, restock on the things that have gone off my pantry that I should always have. Snacks, cookies, dry goods, all that stuff that I might need on an emergency or just on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the entire month. But after that first week, the rest of the three weeks of the month, I just buy the groceries for what I'm going to need that week. That's it. And I do like going every Sunday just because I do kind of enjoy going to the supermarket. I like the ritual. I go with my boyfriend. It's just part of like our weekend thing. I actually really like it. If you don't, maybe you could do this every two weeks or that's pretty much it. I don't think you can do this once a month, but at least every two weeks could work for you or you can order your groceries every week, which I think just buying for the week saves you so much money because you don't end up buying things that go bad. You also don't buy an excess of things that you don't end up eating and just get stored and stored and stored in your pantry. Yes, my pantry looks kind of empty, but it has everything I'm going to need for the week and I have a very clear budget of how much I need to spend every single week. So as promised in the heading of this video, I do a lot of this planning on Notion so let's go to my computer and I can show you what I have there to make your life so much easier. So within my Notion, I have a page that is called food. And within this page, I only have four sub pages that I use. The first one is called the recipe book, which we'll sneak into that one in a little bit. The second one is the shopping list. Then we have the restock list and the takeout orders. Groceries are so complicated to do if you don't have a list. You're going to spend so much more money. I feel like this is an obvious tip. So I have two lists in here that make my life so much simpler. The first one is my restock list. And this is the one that I really want to share with you. This is basically a list of the things that I tend to buy in the supermarket, whether I buy them often or not often. It doesn't matter. It's the things that I normally purchase for my house. And they are organized by the different food groups so that it's easy to search for in a specific aisle as I'm walking through the supermarket. And basically, I have frozen foods. Um, so all of the things that I buy, veggies, then I have dry goods, dairy, grains, and other random stuff that I might end up purchasing. Now, the way I use this list is that as I am going to go to the supermarket on the first week of the month, which is my restock day, I look at this list and I cross off everything that I already have. So for example, I like to have salmon in the freezer just because if I wanna cook a random meal, I can just defrost it really quickly. So if I already have it in the freezer, I'm gonna cross it off and do the same thing for everything on this list. Basically leaving me only with the things uncrossed that I still have to purchase. When I go to the supermarket, I open up this list and basically know that I have to buy everything that has been unchecked. Why do I use this for my restock instead of just using my regular, you know, writing what I need? In my 
list because this makes my life so much simpler. I know I have to buy these things. These are things that I probably need super often. So it's so much easier to already have them down. If I have them, cross them off. If I don't, I need to purchase them. It makes my life so much simpler and it takes out the whole guessing and the very frustrating a scenario where you went to the supermarket and forgot those things that you actually really really use. The other list that I use is the supermarket list or the shopping list which is where I am just it's just a normal to-do list where I'm just adding something to buy whatever I might need as the week goes by I just drop it in there so that I make sure not to forget it and I also use this one as a meal planning to write down what I'm going to buy for the upcoming week. So the part we're all wondering about, what do I plan for every week? Do I have, you know, themed days? Do I plan a different meal every day? Do I, no. I keep it as simple as possible. Every single week I meal plan and prep four things. One breakfast option, two lunches, and one dinner option. Oops, four things. <laughs> Let me walk you a little bit through this. So for breakfast, I like to have a, you know, a sturdier breakfast than just cereal or yogurt, but I always have in my fridge, always, always, always yogurt and cereal, just in case I'm in a hurry, just in case that's what I'm in the mood for, just in case I'm not hungry. I keep that in the fridge and then I just buy the ingredients for one breakfast option. We'll get into the examples in a little bit so I can show you my screen. Then comes the lunch options. For the lunch, I like to make things that I can take in a lunch box that I can just prep and heat up in a microwave. So. That's why I call them lunch and separate it from dinner. It's just things that are gonna be pre-cooked all the way through. And I make two options, and I make enough of each option for three days of the week. This way, I don't have to eat the same thing twice in a row, but I also don't have to think of 10 recipes to cook for the week. And finally, I make one dinner option. And the reason I call it dinner instead of lunch, even though it could be the same, is because it can be something that might need a little cooking on the side. So for example, I'm making, I don't know, a salmon salad. Maybe I want to cook the salmon at dinner time right before I'm going to eat because I'm going to be at home to do that little extra work. And I make enough of this dinner to cover two days. Eh, maybe three if it's a big recipe I can make a little more, but at least two days. And of course you're wondering what happens to the rest of the dinner days? What if you eat the dinner for lunch? Blah blah blah. What happens to the, all the meals that you're missing? I have noticed that if I make more than this, it goes bad. I don't eat it either because I'm bored of it or because I happen to go out in the middle of the week. I was in the mood for pizza, so I ordered one. I wasn't hungry, so I had soup for dinner. Things happen and you're probably not gonna eat what you plan to eat every single day. And the biggest tip I can give you from this section of what it is that I plan for is to keep it as simple as possible, which is what I decided, four meals every week, period. And most importantly, to not find every day a meal. So you can't say, Monday I'm gonna eat meatballs, Tuesday I'm gonna eat tacos, Wednesday I'm gonna eat frozen food, because when it comes to Wednesday and you're not in the mood for frozen food, you're gonna end up most likely eating out. Okay. If you're with me so far, it's time to go into the templates. Let's go on my computer. So I'm gonna walk you through the example of what I planned last week. For starters, I log onto my food page on my Notion, and then I go to what I call my recipe book. Um, this is just a huge database if you are familiar with how Notion works. Each one of these is a page and it has the ingredients for the recipe that I'm talking about and the instructions on how to make it and hopefully a little picture because you know food is very visual and I like to separate these usually by meat like fish chicken meat <laughs> soups breakfast as you're looking at it on this page and I have the name of the recipe so for example this crispy honey orange glazed salmon um, and then I have the meat that it is or kind of like the meal that I use it for how healthy the recipe is so you can rate it and then the amount of time it takes me to make it so fast elaborate or slow cooker slow cooker you know are my favorite just dump it in there and forget about it and maybe some other things here like if it's like meal prep or freezer meal etc so I go into this list and I basically look at it throughout meals I decide something that I'm gonna have for breakfast as you can see over here and I just click this little box that says this week. I'll show you what that does in a second. And I already have my breakfast done. So let's pick two lunches and one dinner. For this week, I decided to make 
fajitas, which I love. We also made like burger patties and we ended up making, I think the pesto salad, which is on chicken over here. Here we go, one breakfast, two lunches and one dinner. And all of these are checked with this little box that says this week. What does that do? So when I go into my life dash, which is basically my personal board, I have this section here that says recipe book and here are the four recipes that I had picked for the week. So you can see the breakfast, the two lunches, and the dinner. So basically, I know that these are the things that I have to shop for. And at the top here, I have a section for the budget that I have for that week for groceries. And these are the things that I will meal prep and have to include in my shopping list, which I have very handy to the right over here. So we'll open the shopping list on one side and each one of these recipes on the other side and start copy pasting the ingredients that I have to buy for this upcoming week week on my shopping list. Obviously, I take a look at my pantry, see what I have and what I don't have, what I need to buy, and edit the amount of ingredients that I need to buy depending on how much I want to prep. And that is it. Pretty darn simple. <laughs> Once you have the four recipes that you chose and the shopping list ready, it's time to go shopping and come back and meal prep. Now, I promised you that I don't spend all of my Sunday doing that, and that is because I break down my meal prepping onto two Days. On Sunday, I typically prep all the stuff that I might need for breakfast. So for example, if it was the salmon and bagels, I don't really have to do anything. Sometimes I have hard boiled eggs and beans. So I need to cook the beans, cook the hard boiled eggs, leave them in the fridge. And I cook one of the lunches. Obviously, so that I have lunch, I take on Monday. And then on Monday night, I finish the rest. So I make the dinner and I usually end up eating that dinner on Monday. I just make twice as much and I make the other lunch. One of these is normally a slow cooker item, so I just drop everything in the slow cooker, don't have to look at it again and just put it on its separate portions once it's done. And that's it. I don't know if it seemed simple to you or it didn't, it is definitely very, very, very simple to me. I used to do very complicated meal prepping and if you just get into the habit from whenever you cook something new, you add it into your recipe book or your recipe list, it doesn't have to be the Notion template. You can very simply have a list or bank of things to choose from and then just pick one breakfast, two lunches, one dinner, cook half of it on Sunday, half of it on Monday and make sure that you go to the groceries every week because it'll save you money and in the long run, a lot of time if you're meal prepping. And that is it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. If you have any other ideas or things that you'd like for me to talk about, go follow me on Instagram. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. I will try to get some templates on for you. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this, but we'll give it a shot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.